What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? Crypto Airborne in the house, dropping you guys the latest and greatest cryptocurrency news and updates. Today is November 8th, 2022. Today's video, we'll be doing a crypto market over because the markets are dumping. I'm talking really fast. And then secondly, we'll be talking about FTX and the FTT token is dumping right now. It did not hold its support levels that I talked about in yesterday's video. And last but not least, we have a lunar eclipse and a full moon earlier this morning. How is that going to affect the markets? I don't know. If you guys think that's interesting, stick around. I'll tell you all my thoughts. All right, everyone. Hopefully, you're all having a great day today, wherever you guys are in the world. People in Australia, I got people in Europe, wherever. Ever it may be, I'm doing another late night video upload. It's early right now, November 8th. It's 12.53 a.m. Again, I work this second shift, so I'm, this is kind of like my 7, 8 p.m. time for, you know, the regular 9 to 5ers. But, you know, it's been a crazy day today. And just so happened when I came off of work, just the market started to dump. And I was just curious, like, why is it dumping? And if you guys watched yesterday's video, we got a full moon and a lunar eclipse happening. I got something I think you guys will find interesting at the end of the video talking about that and how it uh, relates to the Bitcoin charts and how lunar eclipses and all that type of stuff. It's really pretty cool. Uh, but, you know, some people don't really like to trade on that. Some people do. I just think it's for fun, but it's kind of crazy how the world revolves around that. And it, it all ties back to uh, just Fibonacci levels, your energy. Just I can get deep into that, but that's a whole other conversation. <laughs> Anyway, let's just jump right into a crypto market overview before we start talking about FTX and FTT token. But uh, yeah, markets are down. Let me refresh this again. It's been so volatile the last hour. So markets down about 5.49% the last 24 hours. We got Bitcoin down about 5.86%. We had a big dump, kind of starting to recover right now at the current time. Uh, 19,660. ETH's down 7.64%, sitting at $1,465. BNB's down. Uh, let's see what else we have here. XRP is down 8%. Doge is down 15%, sitting at just under $0.10. Cents. And Cardano, that about 6.54%, sitting at $0.38. Cents. Let's see. We I guess we still had some gainers. Not many, though. But the top one looks like it's Silo, up about 36%. DFI.money, up about 4.48%. And Toncoin, up about 3.92%, sitting at $1.65. Top losers, even though the whole market's down right now. Let's just see who the worst losers the last 24 hours were. Hashflow down about 65%. FTX token down 28.47% the last 24 hours at $15.69. It broke that level of resistance, that $21, that $22 level that I talked about yesterday that they were trying to hold up. We'll get in that here in a second. Today is November 8th, 2022. It's election day. It's also STEM and STEAM day. Uh, a bet and aid punsters day. Cook Something Bold and Pungent Day, like I just said, Election Day. It's Adam Day, so shout out to the Adams. National Ashley Day, shout out to the Ashleys. Cappuccino Day, it's Christopher Day. Uh, National Harvey Wallbanger Day, that looks refreshing. Irene Day, Kyle Day, Leon Day. It's a, wow, it's a holiday for a lot of different people's names. Uh... Uh, that's pretty much it. Just a bunch of other random holidays for November 8th. Crypto bubbles. Let's take a look at the day. Yep, see a red, not surprised. Uh, however, the last hour or so at the recording of this video, 12.56 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, starting to make a little bit of recovery. Looks like BitDAO is up about 9% the last hour. Uh, let's take a look at my favorites the last day. See a red, literally everything. Doge looks like it's down the most. Uh, let's take a look this past hour. Everything's still pretty much in the red, so no surprise there. The total crypto market cap, this is on the one-minute chart. I was just messing around with it earlier, but uh, at least on the four-hour, huge dump. Not looking good for the total crypto market cap, $928 billion. Again, talked about this yesterday, but we did just punch through that weak Ichimoku cloud right there. We are overbought a lot right there on the RSI in the MACD. Looks like we still have some negative momentum going on right now. But again, we are far away from the Ichimoku cloud. We're way oversold, so I wouldn't be surprised if we start to see a little uh, recovery the next uh, day or so. Uh, let's see. Total crypto market cap, according to CoinGecko, says we're still over a trillion, although I don't really know where they pull their data from, but I always like to share two different types of things. 928 on, on TradingView, uh, 928 billion, and a little over 1 trillion on uh, CoinGecko. 
DXY. You guys know me. Every time DXY is up, crypto and the traditional markets are down and vice versa. So at least in the four hour chart, we have a big green candle the last four hours. Let's just take a look at the 30 minute chart. Like I said, we had a big dump, but look, look what happened. DXY has been pumping. So there's always a correlation. We are a little bit uh, far away from the Ichimoku cloud in the 30 minute chart. Let's just pull up a four hour chart far away from that Ichimoku cloud. So I wouldn't be surprised if the DXY continued to pump and the crypto markets and whatnot maybe started, will maybe pretty much be in the red all day tomorrow or earlier today, depending on when you guys watch this video. Bitcoin dominance on the four-hour chart. We're trying to push through this Ichimoku cloud. Big green candle on that four-hour chart. Uh, RSI is a little overbought right here in the MACD. We still got a little bit of green momentum on the histogram going on. Let's take a little bit of sm a smaller time frame. 30-minute chart. I don't really want to look at that one. One-hour chart. Been pumping the last uh, couple of hours on Bitcoin dominance. We are just over that Ichimoku cloud. So, you know, it's a little bit too early to tell how we're going to be doing on the Bitcoin dominance. Crypto Fear and Greed Index down two points from yesterday. We're at a 31, whereas yesterday we're at a 33. Be fearful when others are greedy. Greedy when others are fearful. Famous Warren Buffett quote. A lot of people like to trade on that Fear and Greed Index. Uh, traditional markets looks like Dow futures. Let me just uh, refresh this. Are down. S&P and Nasdaq futures are all down. But uh, yesterday, at least on the 7th of November, it looks like everything closed pretty green uh, on the daily. Uh, Bitcoin TA, not really going to get too deep into this, but uh, we are way oversold right here, far away from the Ichimoku cloud in the four hour chart. So, I mean, it could go a little bit further, but I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if you had a nice little relief to the upside here in, in the short term on a lower time frame charts. Let's take a look at the daily here on Bitcoin. Yeah, big red candle, bust, tried to bust through this Ichimoku cloud. We were above it, so I'm not surprised that we did a little, uh, you know, down, downtrend into that Ichimoku cloud. We're neutral on the RSI, and we are starting to get into a little bit of negative momentum there on the MACD on the histogram. So that's at least on the daily. Let's take a look at the four hour real quick, far away from that Ichimoku cloud. So again, within the next four to eight hours, I wouldn't be surprised if Bitcoin made a little bit of recovery just because we are oversold here on the RSI. All right, so there you guys have it for your crypto market overview. I feel like I'm talking really fast because I did do a little bit longer video, only about seven minutes in. So let's talk about the main topic of discussion for today is the FTX token, the FTT token. So we are down about 29.4% well, the last 24 hours, currently looking at about $15.79 uh, or $15.79. 24-hour trading volume is about uh, $1.6 billion, which is pretty crazy. Total market cap is about $2.1 billion. And uh, let's just see. Yeah, we had that big dump on Monday, uh, November 7th at around 10-ish. So just, you know, a couple hours ago, we had that big dump. It was trying to hold that, that $22 level that I talked about in yesterday's video. I'm not going to get into all the details. Go check that video out for why all this is happening and maybe this correlates to the rest of the markets. It's just kind of like history is repeating itself with a lot of these different exchanges. Like, remember the big Luna collapse? The insolvency, no, it's just it's just crazy. Again, I'm not going to get too deep into it. We did have a descending triangle, which uh, usually is a bearish pattern, and we busted right through that. We wicked all the way down to it looks like $14.96. Here's the four-hour chart. Uh, we are far away from the Ichimoku cloud in the four-hour. Take a look at the daily. We are oversold on that for the FTT token. Way oversold here. So again, I'm, I would not be surprised if we started to make a little bit of a recovery here on the FTT token. So Mitch Ray, shout out to him. He's a, t a technical analysis expert that I've been following for years right now. Real chill dude. Uh, he goes live literally pretty much every single day or when the markets does a big dump or goes to the upside. He was just live about an hour ago. I was watching him a little bit, but he said, the FTT support is broken. See you at $4.58. So it did break that support level, and there's really not much support between uh, the $22 level and $4.58. So we could see a massive dump and some insolvency with FTX. I personally moved all my crypto off of FTX.us. I'm not playing around. I'm not doing the same thing that, ha that happened to me on Voyager where I do have crypto locked up. So uh, not financial advice, but if you guys do have any crypto on that exchange, I highly suggest that you move it to a decentralized uh, wallet or a hardware wallet or non-custodial wallet. 
again, I do not trust any centralized exchange right now in this crazy uh, crypto time that we have. And, you know, learn from your mistakes, learn from me, would not do it. So it looks like earlier today we did have SBF kind of shoot back of this big, you know, CZ Binance and, and, and FTX, it's people just arguing back and forth. SBF's coming on here saying the competitor is trying to go after us for false rumors. FTX is fine. Assets are fine. We've heard that in the past from all the other CEOs of these companies that have failed. Alex Mashinsky, Steve Ehrlich, all that. I don't trust any of these guys anymore, people. So, again, he, he gets into all this stuff. Oh, we FTX is enough to cover all client holdings. We don't invest in clients' assets, even in treasuries. I'm not going to go through all of this. You guys can pause it. It's heavily regulated even when it slows down. We have GAAP audits with greater than $1 billion excess cash. I'd love CZ Binance if we could work together for the ecosystem. I agree with that, but uh, I don't trust anything that he says. Anyone could say anything. This is the same type of stuff that happened in the past, like I just previously had mentioned with uh, Celsius and Voyager. Again, it's just all BS. I mean, yeah, and how that's related to the Voyager, uh, the Voyager Chapter 11 uh, bankruptcy and them buying the assets, I have no clue, man. I hope I, we don't get double left here. But, uh, yeah, he kind of fired back at all that. And then CZ Binance a little bit earlier in the day at 2.05 p.m. Eastern said that he was out with friends yesterday when the topic of whale alerts came up. Because apparently uh, he had a bunch of FTT. There was a whale alert that was sold off or moved uh, moved around. And uh, he, like, quote retweeted or something. But he didn't realize kind of what that was going to do in all the crypto market and the crypto Twitter space. He said, following our principles, I decided to be transparent. So I wrote a thread in five minutes, posted it. Little did I know it was going to be the straw that broke the camel's back. Everyone wants more transparency in their industry, right? My tweets are simple. There were questions about large 580 million FTT deposit to Binance. And we were transparent about the fact that we are closing our FTT position. The fact that it sparked such levels of discussion were surprising. There were also conspiracy theories how somehow orchestrated this whole thing. If you read this thread, you would appreciate that no one can orchestrate this I'm not going to go through that whole thread from uh, Miles Deutscher, Do Deutscher, I think his name is. Uh, funny memes, media, and some people tried to co color this as a fight. Sorry to disappoint, but I, he spends his energy building and not fighting. Today I spent my day on our business and our community. I expect others to do the same. Back to building. Again, he's like the OG CEO of crypto. Uh, CZ, man, I, I highly agree with what he's saying. SBF, I don't trust the guy anymore. Uh, he is early, or he's not early, but he's new to crypto. BlackRock has invested into FTX. If you guys know anything about BlackRock, just go do your own research or come to my live streams on TikTok, and I'll get deep into the whole conspiracy aspect of it. But uh, I don't know. I think CZ's legit. He's like one of the only people I think that I kind of trust. Again, I don't trust anybody, but uh, one of the OG crypto companies is, is Binance. So I think he's truly in it for the fight. And uh, I don't think there's a fight going on, but, I mean, he's just trying to defend his, uh, himself, and he probably sees something in FTX, and there's all the crazy things about FTX and everything going on with them and not trusting them and how their futures platform and all that type of stuff. But uh, that's a whole other video that we could do. All right, so moving on. Earlier, early this morning, depending on when you guys watch this, there is going to be a lunar eclipse at exactly 6.01 a.m. or a full moon as well. Uh, Maren Altman, she's a big astro astrological uh, trader, and uh, she does a lot of different things about Bitcoin. She has called a lot of crazy moves that were correct. She called like the presidential election, the last presidential elec election, and a lot of these big moves that we've had in the crypto space. But she says, your girlfriend will be less crazy after the eclipse passes. Forget, none of you have girlfriends. Mom will be less crazy since you live with her. It's kind of funny. Can't sleep? Yeah, it's a full moon. Well, not just a full moon, it's a lunar eclipse. Well, not just a lunar eclipse, it's a lunar eclipse conjunct to Uranus, which people hate when they say that. They, to be PC, they say Uranus. I just still say it how it should be pronounced, at least in my opinion. Uranus. <laughs> the most disruptive planet possible. Basically, no one is falling asleep, so that's going to be tonight. But, uh, yeah, we got that. Lunar eclipse in May is greater than Luna crash. Lunar eclipse in November, because she, quote, retweeted, get your phones on FTX is not financial advice. I literally put, because I have no info about the situation nor comments about any exchange, but there are mar market parallels. Very interesting. I want to come back to this in the next week or so and just see what happens with FTX. Also, something really interesting. I found this tweet. Uh, it is from October 31st, but uh, it's pretty cool. So he said, there's a strange observation. Every four years, 
The world experiences a total lunar eclipse season. There's anywhere from two to four eclipses per season. He's notated them all on this Bitcoin chart. So he has a small thread here. So let's go to his next one. So basically when you zoom in, the green moons, so these small green moons right here, uh, notate the first eclipse of the season. And the larger orange moons, these ones right here, notate the last eclipse of the season. Notice how the green ones are close to the highs. So this little small green here was this high back in June of 2011 when Bitcoin was at its highest. You have one near the top here back in uh, late 2014-ish when we had the high there. We had uh, the, the orange at the low. Then we basically had pumped up to that next green one. We had the orange uh, low here back Monday 28th of September 2015, and it kind of just kept going up from there. Notice how close the green ones are to the highs and how there are no newer lows, no new lower lows after the last eclipse of the season, which is what we're about to come up onto. So here we are today where we have one more eclipse this season, November 8, 2022, here in the next six hours, or five hours actually. On November 8, 2022, the white lines notate the last eclipse of the season it occurs along with the orange moon logo. He's not trading based on this, but it is neat and worth observing. Again, guys, I've always found this pretty fascinating, just how the world revolves around frequencies and energies and the astro astrological, you know, moon phases and all that type of stuff. But, but take a look at this. This is the bear market low. We had that final lunar eclipse, and ever since then, we've been on an uptrend. And then look, there's that last lunar, crip, lunar eclipse that we had in the, well, at least near the top that we had in April of 2021, kind of where we peaked out. And we've been in a downtrend ever since, essentially, since uh, uh, November of 2021. This is, People saying this was a fake out, the November, mid-November 2021 high. But uh, it's just crazy how this all lines. So could this lunar eclipse potentially indicate the next bottom and then we're going to be on the next uptrend until the next lunar eclipse that we have whenever that is also you got those bitcoin halvings coming on so i don't know i thought this is this is pretty interesting let me know down in the comments below if you guys are into that but i definitely found this tweet i did give it this guy a uh well let's give him a like right now i'm gonna follow i think i retweeted his main one too to my main so yeah what do you guys think uh, again, here is the moon phase indicator, not hundred percent accurate, but, uh, we are coming up on that full moon, which usually is the Bitcoin bottom. And we just dump tonight. We're dumping into the full moon. We might be dumping a little bit afterwards or a day or so, but we might pump into the new moon into the next, uh, new moon that we have. But, uh, yeah, it's pretty interesting. Just taking a look at all that. And I thought I'd bring that to your guys' attention if you guys don't follow it or you just stumbled across this video. All right, guys, it's going to do it. Go give me a follow on Kavari on the Elrond Network. This is a decentralized NFT video streaming platform. I've been uploading a couple videos on there where essentially when I after I upload, mints a video. So it goes straight into my Meyer decentralized non-custodial wallet where I own this. They can't shut it down or anything. I think it's going to be the future of, uh, of social media and, and content creators. They have the... Uh, their own token that they have that kind of powers the platform. But go give me a follow and check that out or let me know down in the comments if you're any more interested in that. Go give me a follow on TikTok at Crypto Airborne. I've been going live just hanging out, you know, talking about life and crypto and everything. So go check that out. Give me a follow on Instagram at Crypto underscore Airborne. Last but not least, go give me a follow on Twitter where I am the most active at Crypto underscore Airborne. And uh, try to get me to 2,000 followers if, if you guys want to. I mean, you don't have to, but uh, that is where I am the most active and where I am engaged the most on all of my social media. So that's going to do it for me. Let me know what you guys think, how the rest of the week's going to go. Are we going to continue to dump? Are we going to have a nice little relief rally the next day or so? And uh, what about FTX? Did you guys move all your crypto off? I definitely did the other day, and it definitely took a while. I heard transfers uh, are going real slow right now. It took about seven hours to transfer the little Bitcoin I had off of it the other day. And uh, again, just in the last couple hours, people are saying it's going really slow. But uh, I highly suggest getting your crypto off of that because I don't. I've learned from my previous mistakes with Voyager and keeping it, and trusting the platform and the CEO and the tweets leading up to it. Don't trust anyone. Don't put all your eggs in one basket. Have better risk management, and uh, not your coins, not your crypto. That's gonna do it for me, guys. Have a great night. Have a good morning. Have a good afternoon wherever you guys are at when you guys watch this video. I sure do appreciate it. 
Smash that thumbs up button on your way out. Consider subscribing if you aren't. Turn on the bell notifications so you know, get notified as soon as I upload a video. Crypto Airborne, out.